Hey guys, welcome back to my daily vlog number two. So the reason why I wanted to start this vlog was to connect with you guys more and one of your comments really stood out. One of you asked, what is your name? I don't even know. I normally just refer to you as Miss Honeysuckle. And this is exactly why. I've talked to so many of you guys that I don't know your names either. So hello, my name is Zhang. So for example, Duda Girl, if you're watching this, I talk to you on a weekly basis, but I know you as Duda Girl. I'd love to know your name too. Thank you so much for all of you guys that come by to say hi and leave me a comment. It's gonna be amazing for us to really get to know each other. I wanted to just share with you a little bit of what happened yesterday to my poor Ollie. Ollie, come here! The poor baby is in a cone. What happened was that we went out to the field to play ball with him and he loves balls and was chasing it so hard that he couldn't stop. So I'm gonna put him down real quick. And he's just so intense when he plays. Like the Border Collie really comes out where he's just so focused on his job to go get the ball that he just like runs after it, afraid of any dog um, that might come take get away from him so he like lunges for it and he has a really hard time stopping and so he like skidded um, to get the ball and then it tore his dew claw poor thing I started seeing his um, paws bleeding so I didn't know what happened and finally we rushed over there just to look at it and part of his claw had come out like imagine if your thumb got separated from your hand how gnarly that would be but then we were super scared and it was late at night actually it was like eight o'clock so none of the vets were open um, so we had to call them the next day and they said come in because that really needs to get looked at and what happened was they cut off half of his dew claw they gave us the option of either cutting it in half or removing it completely and we didn't want to remove his dew claw completely even though I don't really know what it's used for. I just feel like that would be really painful for him. So they cut off half of it and they stitched it up and so they put a cone on him so he wouldn't bite or lick it. He hasn't gotten neutered yet but that will be coming, so this is a test run for him. And the reason why we haven't neutered him yet was because I talked to several friends, you know, how to take care of a puppy, and my boss has two border collies, and she's done extensive research, and she said that we should keep him unneutered as long as we can so that he could fully develop with his hormones and everything. A lot of times, shelters would snip them off, as young as like eight weeks and I don't know I just feel like they don't have a chance to fully grow and actually she said that that's when um, they can develop cancer maybe in their later years so I didn't want that I feed him organic food and he's my baby so wish him well you guys he's in the cone until Thursday and he's just been crying so much I just don't know what to do Anyways, so he gets a lot of treats for now. So you guys, thank you so much for responding to me wanting to get back into my Vietnamese roots. I think it's really important. I married my husband who's half Korean and half um, Caucasian and he doesn't speak a lick of Korean, which is really sad to me because I feel like he should embrace who he is. Although a lot of times he says, I'm confused, I don't know who I am. And I can understand that where he doesn't really relate to his Caucasian side because he looks completely Asian, at least to me anyways, and he doesn't fully relate to his Korean side because he's. they say he looks mixed. I don't know, I don't see it. I'll have to bring him on the show one day and you guys can tell me what you think. <laughs> we'll objectify him. Just kidding, no, 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 we're not gonna do that. We've been talking a lot about, you know, what we want when we raise kids together. I definitely want them to speak Vietnamese, especially to communicate with my mom who doesn't speak fluent English, but she speaks enough um, to get by, but I think it would be really nice for her to be able to communicate in her language um, with the kids. My niece and nephews don't speak a lick of Vietnamese and I just think it's kind of a bummer. So yeah, I definitely want to teach my kids how to speak Vietnamese and I want to learn Korean just so I could order some Korean food and one day go to Korea and be able to communicate. That would be really fun. We're immersed in so many different cultures today that I think it's it's just really important to learn what other cultures are about. 
When I was growing up, speaking Vietnamese in public, especially in school, wasn't really a cool thing to do, especially with a weird name like mine. I got made fun a lot for having a different name, so I didn't really embrace my Vietnamese culture as much as I should. But now, Vietnamese food, Chinese food, Korean food has exploded around here and so people are really embracing new cultures. It's a way for me to show off who I am too. So, with the cookbook club, I've decided our first two recipes. If you guys are interested, I've left the link um, to the cookbook in the description box or you can visit my website at Honeysuckle Catering and just follow along with the recipes that I post there. But the first one I'm gonna do is the wonton soup. And why am I choosing wonton soup out of all the other ones? Well, wonton soup has a really interesting story in my history. That was all I got to eat when we went out went out to a restaurant from the time I was able to eat solids until I think eight years old. That was all my parents ordered for me. I didn't know anything else existed at restaurants except for wonton soups. And I would ask them later on, why did you always order me wonton soup? And they said, it was easy. I'm like, how sad, you shafted me of the restaurant experience. <laughs> but anyways, so I just wanted to try this wonton soup to see if it's any different because for, I don't know, 20 something years, I haven't had wonton soup because I was traumatized by that experience growing up. And the second one is chicken chow, which is like a chicken porridge. I love oatmeal, so this reminds me a little bit of like oatmeal and porridge, but it also has a lot of healing properties because this is what we would eat when we were sick growing up. This book is really good. I'm excited to tackle the street food and the steaming chapters because they have all of my favorite foods like ban bao, the Chinese donuts that go really well with the porridge. It's called Jiao Long and Ban Beo, Ban Kung, and Ban Bok Lok, which is so, so good. I can't wait to share it with you guys. Why did I choose this book? Like I said, it's to get back in touch with my Vietnamese roots, but I also met the author of this book. His name is Mr. Charles Fan, and he's the owner of a famous famous restaurant in San Francisco called Slanted Door. It's located in the ferry building right underneath the Bay Bridge so you get this amazing view of Alcatraz. So I met him at an event and he's just so, so nice. He talked about the inspiration for the ban gan that he was serving at that event that evening and it was so funny how I met him. It was like meeting a celebrity. I was waiting for my husband to get some wine and I'm walking through on my my phone and I look up and all of a sudden I see him standing behind my husband and I'm like oh my god oh my god so I take my phone and I'm texting my husband and I'm like turn around turn around and then he looks up and I'm like hi my name is Zong it's so nice to meet you I'm such a huge fan it was like such a weird and funny moment I was so starstruck by this chef that I had looked up to for so long I have this book and I have his slanted door cookbook and I love chefs and what they do because I love creating and I love what he's done not only with his food but building his empire of restaurants in San Francisco. He told me about how he immigrated to Guam um, and how now he travels all over the world to work with other chefs and uh, different programs just to kind of get Vietnamese food out there, which is really awesome. Um, so Mr. Fan, if you're watching this, hello, and I cannot wait to cook out of your cookbook. <laughs> Again, tongue-tied. <laughs> On to my second topic of the day, which is shoes. What girl doesn't love shoes, right? I am a shoe-aholic. I think I own more shoes than I do clothes. It's like a collection to me. Even though I don't wear everything I have all the time, it's just so beautiful to look at. I originally pulled eight shoes, but I realized I'm also wearing one, so we're gonna do nine shoe, um, shoes that are perfect for any summer wardrobe. First, I wanted to share with you guys my summer flats collection for sandals. This one here is a tan and gold one by Seashells. These are by far the most comfortable sandals I've ever had, and I've had them for about two, three years now. Um, I like them because they have a tiny sliver of a heel so that it 
gives me a little bit of height. I love that it has a gold and tan band right here, so it adds a little bit of formalness. It's not as casual as all of the others, just plain sandals. I feel like I can dress this up or wear it to work even. Yeah, which I have. <laughs> okay, so my next one are these gold gladiator sandals by Matt Bernson. I've had these for a couple years as well, um, and they're just so comfortable. I took them with me to Hawaii and I practically lived in them. The gladiator trend was really in a few years ago and I still feel like it works for today. I mean, they're just so comfortable, I'm not gonna get rid of them. I really want one of those pom-pom gladiator sandals that are really popular today, but I just haven't really pulled the trigger yet. But these are my gold sandals. And they go with everything too. I wear them with skirts and shorts anytime I need just like something easy to throw on. And then these are my lace-up gladiator shirts sandals. The lace-up trend is really in right now. I got these last year and I also brought them with me to Hawaii. The sad thing is, is that my husband told me these shoes don't do you any favors. They cut off your leg and make you look stumpy. Hmm. Whatever to him I say, whatever. I like them a lot actually, but I'll take his feedback and I'll just pair them with shorts or something. Usually I'll just wear them with like a sundress. They are just so comfortable and they just look fierce. Now we're gonna go into the wedge and platforms. These right here are one of my favorite shoes this summer. They're the Flatform Espadrilles by Mark Fisher. They're really popular right now on the blogosphere and the fashion blogs, and I can see why because they're super comfortable, and I love the added height without that high pitch so that I feel like my foot's going like this. It's like a flat form almost that's super comfortable, and it just goes with everything. I wear this when I just need a little bit of extra height when I don't Feel like wearing flats. The second flat form wedge that I love are these ones from Sam Edelman. They're like a neutral green mossy color so they go with a lot of the neutral clothes that I have and I also love that it's like a flat form too. I think you guys are noticing a trend. Don't get me wrong, I love heels but just for summertime this is just really easy and comfortable to walk in. It's made of it's not wood, but it looks like wood, um, so it's a lot easier to walk in. And he has like this arch in here that makes it just hug your feet. I usually pair these with just my skinny jeans or even like a simple sundress, something easy. And these right here, you guys might have seen me snap about it on Snapchat yesterday. These are a new addition to the family. Um, I got these, okay, so let me tell you a story. I got these from matchesfashion.com. It's a UK site and I was a little bit weary about ordering from them because I had no experience. I didn't know who they were. Always Google about a website before I purchase and give them like all my information, right? And I'm super impressed with them. I ordered these on Sunday and I got these at my door from the UK on Tuesday. That is speedy service. I can't even get that on Amazon sometimes, you guys, so I'm super happy with them. More on the shoes. These are by Isabelle Marant. I got them on super sale. I think they're made of, they look like wood, but they're a little bit heavier than my Sam Edelman's, but they're super comfortable. I like that they're a little bit wider right here, so they're not like pinching my feet in. But the thing that really drew me to these shoes are the multicolored straps right here. It's just fun. I can wear these with anything too, and it has that little bit of a 70s boho vibe that I really love, so I'm looking forward to wearing these a lot. And they're really easy to walk in too. Not as easy as a Sam Edelman, because because I feel like I have to kind of rock my feet a little bit when I walk, but they're good. I highly recommend them. Finally, I am a total heels girl. In my 20s, I wore heels like almost every day and unfortunately, I feel like it kind of ruined my feet. So now I try to just wear like flat forms or flat as much as I can. And I don't work in a traditional office anymore so I don't feel like pressured or the need to dress up um, professionally like I used to. So going into the heels, these are my favorite favorite sandals. I've had them I think for 
I don't know, like five or maybe six years now. These are by um, C by Chloe. I got them on shopbop.com a long time ago and th today they're still super relevant in my life. They have a big platform right here so I feel like it's not super high when I walk. It's about a three inch heel if you take into consideration the platform in front. I'm five foot five and I love high heels especially platforms and I'm so thankful that my husband is at least like five inches taller than me so that I can wear these without towering over him or being taller I just I don't like being taller than him my next favorite shoe are these by Vince they are almost clog like with the wood heel I think I don't know when they make shoes are they real wood you guys or are they just made to look like wood they feel kind of soft. Anyways, these are super duper comfortable for being like this type of clog wood, just how it's constructed here. They're very well padded down here and they have a lot of support. So I really like wearing these and they go with a lot of my dresses um, and pants too. So anytime I feel like I need a neutral looking shoe, I reach for these. And last but not least, my very favorite, the creme de la creme, are these pink platform sandals. Yay! I know, they're high too. They're like, I think four and a half or five inches. But again, they have this platform at the bottom, which helps with the walking a lot. And these are by Loafler Randall. I love that they're pink and I wear these to any kind of like formal events. Let's say if there's a wedding, I'll pair a dress or something with these shoes. And a lot of times weddings in the summer are in grass. so. Given this nice thick block heel, I don't sink in. So they're really comfortable too. And I just love the color pink. It's my favorite color. It goes really well with this outfit too. If you guys liked any of these shoes, I've linked to them in the description box. And I also post my daily outfits on Instagram as well as my blog at Honeysuckle Catering. So check those out too. What are your favorite summer shoes? And are there any that you love that you wanna share? Comment below. If you guys are new to this daily vlog, be sure to check out my vlog from yesterday where I talked about Vietnamese home cooking and my cookbook club and summer goals. Thank you so much for watching my day two vlog. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye!